Hi class, in this lecture here I want to move into section 1.2 of your textbook and this section is titled Algebraic Limits and Continuity. So what's the goal of this section of the textbook? Well the first thing we want to do is we want to learn about methods for evaluating limits. So if you recall we had some some function like this in a previous lecture. Something that looked like this x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. And, and, and what we saw was that uh, this function does not exist when x is equal to 3, okay? But we looked graphically and we saw that the limit as x goes to 3 of this function did indeed exist, and it was actually equal to 6. So we did this, we'll, we're going to rework this one. I'm going to show you, you know, methods for evaluating this um, later on in the section, but you know, the way we did this was we looked, we, we either drew the graph of it and examined the graph, or in the previous lecture, I showed you how to do it with a table of values. Um, so I'm gonna show you basically kind of like tricks in today's lecture, or in this video lecture. Okay, so to do this, what we'll need to discuss is some properties of limits, and then what we'll do is we'll end this lecture actually talking about continuity. Okay, so the first one here. Um, for any polynomial or rational function. So remember what a polynomial is. A polynomial is sum of monomials. So just to recall, polynomial would look something like this, right? It'd be like 2x cubed minus 5x plus 1. I don't know, something like that. Or it could even be just x squared. Or, you know, it could be 5x to the fourth minus 7 you know, x squared plus 3, anything like that. That's a polynomial. So for any polynomial or rational function, so rational function, is just some, some quotient of two polynomials. So it would be something like this. x plus 3 divided by x squared minus 8, something like that. Okay, that, that, that's what a rational function would be. All right, with the letter a, Okay, in this case, a is going to represent a real number, though. So with a being in the domain of f, okay. If you have the limit as x goes to a of f of x, all right, as long as a is in the domain of f, okay, so what that means is as long as you can just, like, plug it in, then the limit is solved by just literally plugging in x is equal to a into your function f of x. That's it. Okay, that's, that's all you have to do. So let me just do a quick example here for you. For example, if I say the limit as x goes to 2 of, let's even take this first one here. 2x cubed minus 5x plus 1. Does 2 exist in the domain of this polynomial? Well, absolutely, right? The, the domain of a polynomial is all real numbers. So you're literally just going to take this and plug it in. So this is 2 times 2 to the third power minus 5 times 2 plus 1. Well, 2 to the third power is 8 times 2 is 16. 5 times 2 minus 10 plus 1. So this will end up just being seven. So as long, so what I'm saying here is if you can just plug it into the function and it doesn't make the, the, the function undefined, just run with it, just plug it in and that's how you can evaluate the limit. Some other ones here, some, so that's the first main one that we'll use. Um, what I'm gonna show you is some like, as the lectures go on, some like tools in your tool chest for evaluating limits. So like your first tool is, can I just plug it in there? You know, and if it and if it's you know doesn't make it undefined, then that's just the limit. And, but this works for polynomial and rational functions. Okay, next, so let's go through some properties. So the limit of a constant is a constant. So if I say the limit as x goes to a of c, this is just equal to c. Like for example here, suppose I say the limit as x goes to two of five. What is this equal? Well, let me just show you the graph of this, right? So constant function is just a horizontal line. So 
f of x is equal to 5 just looks like this. So as x goes to 2 from either side, where does it look like the value of the function is going? Well, it's just going to 5. So no matter what the constant is, and or whatever the value of the limit's asking it goes to, it just goes to that constant. So even if it's something like this, the limit as x goes to 3 of 7 pi, well, 7 pi is just a constant. The answer is just 7 pi. That's it. Okay, so whenever you see a constant and there's a limit, it's just the constant. So the next one here, if you have some function um, and the limit as x goes to a is equal to some number l, okay, so the limit exists and is equal to a number, then the limit of a power is the power of that limit and the limit of the root is just the root of that limit. So for example, if I say the limit as x goes to a of f of x raised to the m power, what you can do is you can just define the limit as x goes to a of the function and whatever that is, raise it to the m power. So we know the limit as x goes to a of f of x is just l and you get that. Same thing here with the, with the square root or any nth root here, okay? If limit as x goes to the a of the nth root of f of x, well, you can just take this limit and shoop, go right in underneath the radical here and find the limit as x goes to a of f of x, which we know is l. So it's just the nth root of l. Let me do some examples of these so you can see it. Okay, let's try this one first. The limit as x goes to 2 of x plus 3 squared. All right, so notice how there's a squared here. Okay, you could, if you wanted to, take this and do, evaluate it as the limit as x goes to 2 of this right here, and then square it. That's how you could use the property. Or you could even recognize that x plus 3 squared, it's, just, it's actually just a polynomial expression, just factored. Uh, you could just plug it right in, but we'll just use it using the properties. So limit as x goes to 2, I would just plug into this. This would be 2 plus 3 gets me 5 squared, which would be 25. You'll also get the same thing if you just plug it straight in. Just plug the 2 right in here. You get 2 plus 3 squared. You get 5 squared, which, which also gets you 25. All right, let's try this one here just so you can see with a, with a radical. So the limit as, let's say, x goes to 4 of the square root, let's say, of 2x minus 3. Well, you could evaluate this as the square root of the limit as x goes to 4 of 2x minus 3. Well, you could plug 4 right into this, right? So 2 times um, 4 here minus 3. Well, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 3, this answer just gets you the square root of 5. You also get the same thing, again, just by plugging it straight in. But, you know, some of this, some of these properties are going to be more useful, or, or you, you know, you'll be like, well, it was just easier just to plug it in. Some of these properties will be more useful as we get to much harder problems later on. Okay, uh, sum and difference and the product here. So if you have two limits, this one of f of x is limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to l, and limit as x goes to a of g of x is equal to m. If you have the sum and difference, doesn't matter if it's a plus or minus here, an addition or subtraction, okay? You can evaluate this limit here as two limits. You could find the limits of each individual part. So that's okay. Okay, so what this means is if I asked you to do something like this, the limit as x goes to 0 of 3x plus 5 plus the square root of uh, 2x plus 4. You could evaluate this as the limit as x goes to 0 of the first part plus the limit as x goes to 0 of the second part. And in both cases, you can just plug zero in here. Three times zero gets you zero, plus five is five. Two times zero is zero, plus four is four. 
So plus square root of 4, which gets you 7. You can also do the same thing, and I'll, I'll skip an example for this, but if there's the product, okay, you can just evaluate and find the limit of each thing individually and then multiply them. Next here, the limit of a quotient is just the quotient of the limits. So if you have two functions here, okay, and I ask you to find the limit as x goes to 8, well, you can take the limit of the, as x goes to a of the top part of the, the rational function and limit as x goes to a of the bottom part of the, of the expression. So forgive me for misspeaking about rational function of the expression. So for example, if I say find the limit as x goes to 5 of 2x minus 6 over the square root of, let's say, uh, 5x minus 5, well, here you could find this as the limit as x goes to 5 of 2x minus 6 all over the limit as x goes to 5 of the square root of 5x minus 5. Well, here you could just plug this in, right? So 5 times 2 um, is 10 minus 6 gets you 4. 5 times 5 is 25 minus 5 gets me 20, so over the square root of 20. And then you can even simplify this, right? So this is 4 over uh, 2 square roots of 10. Or 2 over the, uh, I'm sorry, square root of 5. Sorry. Uh, I meant it as 4 times 5. Sorry about that. And 4 comes out as square root of 2. Sorry about that. And you get 2 over the square root of 5. Or you could even write it as 2 square roots of 5 over 5 if you rationalize the denominator. Okay, <clears throat> the next one here, the limit of a constant times a function is the constant times the limit of the function. So if you have the limit as x goes to a of c times some function here, you think about it like this, you could actually just factor out the, the constant. So for example, if I had the limit as x goes to 3 times of 2 times the square root of 4x minus 1, this 2 out in front, this constant, you could take out, and it would be the limit. 2 times the limit as x goes to 3 of the square root of 4x minus 1. Well, here you could just plug the 3 in. Okay, so 4 times 3 is 12 minus 1. So this is just 2, because don't forget you have the 2 out here, times the square root of 11. All right, let's just do some other examples here. Just uh, just. Uh, work these out so you can just see what's going on here. So if I say if I evaluate the limit as x goes to 0 of this expression, so the square root of x squared minus 3x plus 2. Well, look, you're going to take 0. And can you does 0 exist in the domain of this polynomial function underneath the radical? Yes. So you can just plug it right in. So you can even do this as the limit, or excuse me, the square root of the limit as x goes to 0. Well, you can just plug 0 right into this. So 0 squared is 0, minus 3 times 0 is 0, plus 2. So this is literally just the square root of 2. Here you have a polynomial function. 1 exists in the domain. So you just plug this right in. This is 2 times 1 cubed, plus 3 times 1 squared, minus 6. Well, this, this ends up being 2 times 1, plus 3 times 1, minus 6. This ends up just getting you minus 1. And same thing here, right? Like 4 exists in the domain of this. The only thing you cannot plug into this expression here would be um, positive 2 thirds because that would make the denominator equal 0. So you can you can re rewrite it as the limit of as x goes to 4 of the numerator divided by the limit as x goes to 4 of the denominator. Or you realize you can just plug it right in. Four squared is 16, <clears throat> times two is 32. Five times four gives me 20, minus one. All over three times four is 12, a minus two gives me 10. So this is um, uh, 52 minus one, this is 51 over 10. 
All right. So for these, so for these easy ones, the 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 point here is if, if for these very very easy ones, um, if you can plug it in, just plug it in. All right. Okay. Let's let's talk about this one. All right. Let's recall this function here. So this was something we had talked about um, in the first lecture of the class. So this function here, if you recognize, you can factor the top as x minus 3 times x plus 3. So the graph of this, when you cancel this out, the graph of this will look like x plus 3. It's just x cannot equal positive 3. And we saw that this graph looked like this. So there was just it just looked like a straight line just with a hole in it at x is equal to 3. And what we saw here was that this limit here, okay, if you just straight up plug three in here, this is what you get. You end up just getting zero over zero. And I told you that this was called indeterminate form. Okay, and when you have indeterminate form, it generally means the limit exists, okay? And we can see that, okay? that this limit here, as x goes to 3, it looks like the value of the function is going towards 6. So this limit did indeed exist and is equal to 6. So I want to show you how to do this um, without having to draw the graph. Okay. So if direct evaluation leads to that indeterminate form of 0 over 0, the limit still exists. And you, what you're going to do is you're going to use algebraic simplification and or a table and graph are used to find the limit. So what I want to focus on is how you do this algebraically. And you do it algebraically by canceling things out. All right, so let me show you another problem. Find the limit. As x goes to 5 of x plus 5 over x squared minus 25. I'm sorry, make this x minus 5. Sorry about that. So if you were to plug 5 in here, you'd get 5 minus 5 is 0. Over 25 minus 25 is 0. So you get the indeterminate form. But what you should immediately recognize is, hey, that denominator factors. So what you're going to do now is you're going to cancel out the common factor and the numerator and denominator. And you're left with the limit as x goes to 5 of 1 over x plus 5. And now you can, now you can plug it into the function, okay? Because now when you plug 5 in, um, you don't get a, a divide by 0. So this ends up just being 1 over 5 plus 5 or 1 tenth. So you can do this. So if you can... If you can factor and cancel out here to solve a limit, you absolutely can do it. But it will, it's only valid when initially, when you do the problem, if plugging it in gives you the indeterminate form. All right, let's try another one here. Let's do the limit as x goes to 4 of x squared. Um, I'm sorry, as x goes to um, minus 4. Sorry about that. Uh, x uh, plus uh, 9x plus 20 over x minus 4, or x plus 4, sorry. So you'll notice if you plug in negative 4 here, um, what will happen is you'll get 0 out of 0. So what you should immediately recognize is, wait a second, the, the top looks like it can factor. So the limit as x goes to negative 4, I think the top is going to factor into uh, x plus 5 times x minus 4, or x plus 4, excuse me. Right? Because, you know, uh, 5 times 4 gets me 20, and 5 plus 4 gets me 9. And then look, you see those cancel out here. So this ends up just being the limit as x goes to negative 4 of x plus 5, which you can just plug right in. So if you can if you can factor and uh, cancel out here, uh, great, great. 
So I'm going to follow up this lecture next. Uh, I'll do, an, do a final lecture for this section talking about um, continuity.